So that Elden Ring DLC came out. I'm not going to talk about it because I haven't played it. I haven't even played Elden Ring. Uh, but I will say, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm on the record for, I had like a decently long diatribe about not, about why I, why I didn't like Dark Souls 3. And I thought that I explained myself pretty well. Maybe I could, maybe I could like sum it up a little, a little easier than I was working through a lot of thoughts on that segment. Um, but you know, like I, I am not, you know, I think I was talking to like Prox or someone and I was like, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I would probably enjoy a Souls game if it was like 20 hours long or something, if it was like half as long and which I think is what I said the last time. And, uh, someone, whoever was, I was talking to told me like, oh, you would hate Elden Ring. Cause it's like four Souls games in one. And I was like. Oh, okay, I, I just I have negative interest in it now. <laughs> I have negative interest in playing that now. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Here's here's my here's here's how I'm oppressed. I do not have an interest in this series very much anymore, unless they were going to make a, a Bloodborne PC port or something, which I would be interested in checking out because fucking every time I bring this up, someone goes, "You should you should try Bloodborne." Oh, you would like Bloodborne. I wish I could play it. Um, I am surrounded by people who love Souls games. I am sur- I have multiple friends, multiple acquaintances, and many of the people who I follow on the internet are really into Souls games. I I am just like this weird. I I I am like the gay guy who doesn't like Rent. I'm the one gay dude in the commune who doesn't like rent and I have to sit there and, and listen to the fucking soundtrack and hear people talk about it. And I have to go, I do this. Oh my God. Fucking rent again. That's me. That's how I feel. And I'm starting to understand why I haven't had this in a while. Right? Because most of the time, most of the time, if, if you don't like something, you have some sort of control on the internet to just avoid it. You can just, like, like I don't care about Five Nights at Freddy's. I can avoid it for the most part, unless there's just, like, kind of a funny meme or something like that, right? But for, I, don't, I don't really care about that series. I can, I can keep it at an arm's distance away. I can keep it at an arm's, arm's length? Arm's distance? Whatever. I can keep it at, at, at a decent distance away from me. To the point where I'm not like forced to look at Five Nights at Freddy's stuff, uh, and that's that's just fine, you know. I don't ha- I'm, I don't have to engage with anything. But in this specific scenario, I am in I am positioned in like the worst place possible. There are like tracker tracker missiles fucking striking all around me. I'm in the very center. I'm in the very center and I cannot avoid the blast radius of of Elden Ring and Souls discussions. And I think this is how resentment gets built up. I get I get why people don't like a uh, popular thing. I get it, okay? I've never been like a I hate that thing cuz it's popular. I probably was when I was like 9 or something. Like everyone hated Justin Bieber, you know. Everyone hated that guy. Uh, but like in my, in my age, in my current age, I would not consider myself to be someone who hates the current popular thing more so as I have this, my, my version of that is I'm just very disinterested in it. Like if something's popular, I'm like, mm, I just, man, I don't think so, man. I just don't want to get around to it. I have no ill will. I just choose not to engage with it for some, like all of my interest in engaging with it, just, just, just disappears it just evaporates and uh, uh that's worked out for me well probably not i've probably missed out on stuff i otherwise would have liked remember when i was like yeah i don't, I don't yeah man, smiling friends i'll probably like it i'm just not gonna watch it <laughs> and then i we watched it and i was like oh i love this actually that's a recent example uh oh my neck I understand now how 
resentment gets built up because man, when you don't really likes i don't hate dark souls like i think if you actually if anyone actually listened to that segment and you understood my complaints with it and specifically like why i don't like it it's just it's just a very specific matter of taste um that i'm just like okay it's just not a thing that's designed for me in this really specific way uh uh but having to see it over and over and 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 not being able to escape like i go on the internet for five seconds and i've i've been having to waste time on like social media or listen to podcasts or whatever because the video i'm working on right now i was like maybe i, sh- I want to send some emails out to some people before like maybe i can like get some statements on some behind the scenes stuff or at this point doesn't really look like it's going to happen but i'm you know i've been waiting for a couple days uh, just before I start on the script, right? Um, I just want to see if I could, because I'm working on topic, and there's not a lot of behind-the-scenes info out there. And I was like, what if I just reached out to some people? And I've just been in, like, standby mode. Sometimes the, the sometimes you just... <laughs> the, the nature of this work is that you just have to send some emails out and, like, wait for a bit. And I'm like, ah, okay, I'll, I'll play video games while I'm waiting. Uh... Because I can't start on the script or anything, so uh, uh, you know I'll just be intermittently checking social media or something, and I fuck it, I cannot escape from people talking about the fucking Elden Ring and the DLC and like how it's actually super cool to use summons or something. I don't know what any of this means. I don't care. Please stop telling me about it. I just want to stop hearing about it. And I fuck, I cannot. I cannot escape because it's not like pe- things being recommended to me. It's like just people that I follow. Fucking everyone is talking about it. And it's been like two weeks. It's been like two weeks. And I thought, oh, I'll do the review score right down because people were mad because it was too hard. And uh, talking about uh, game journalists are bad at games, but actually the journalists played it. But I don't stop talking about it. Stop it. I'm telling everyone right now. I'm telling, I'm telling everyone right now. Stop talking about Elden Ring. Okay, can we get back to things that I I care about, that I like? Uh, Did I... I came up with, like, a better analogy. I came up with, like, a more succinct... This is what I do, is I I think about something over and over and over again, and I I go over it in my head a hundred times until I figure out, like, exactly, like, how I want to say it. And I came up with, like, a better analogy, I think. I might have, like, vaguely talked about this or I might have gone like in this direction the first time I talked about Dark Souls 3. Um but I want to I want to dump it on you guys because I'm I don't know, I'm proud of this. I think it's actually like a better analogy and a better like simpler explanation of what I'm talking about. Okay. Just just to get it out there for posterity's sake cuz I feel like the original is probably a lot of me rambling about shit. Okay. So Here's the very specific problem that I have with Dark Souls that kind of turns me off from it. Uh, so, and because I watched a Carl Jobs video that was like, oh, yeah, this is what I've been waiting for. Okay, so you guys know Rubik's Cubes. You guys know a Rubik's Cube, like the, the toy. Everyone knows what it is. Um, so a Rubik's Cube, if you just like j- j- jumble it up, and then you, 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 you're like, oh, how do I solve this? You cannot brute force it. If you just twist and twist randomly, you cannot, you're, you're never going to get to the end. You're never going to fi- finish it. You're never going to get all the sides the same color. Uh, fuck, what was the next part of the analogy? <laughs> right? You cannot brute force it. Here's an interesting fact about the normal 3x3x3 three by three by three Rubik's Cube that everyone is familiar with. The maximum number of moves that you need to solve a Rubik's Cube is 20. No matter how jumbled up you get that cube, you can solve it in 20 moves or less. Maybe it's just like a one turn, like you just turn it once, and I just turn it back the opposite direction one time it's a one one move right but no matter if you jumble the entire thing up in a completely random way 
uh, there is a theoretically perfect 20 move sequence that will solve it, right? Uh, uh, so in order to, so humans cannot like perfectly find that 20 move sequence. So what people have done is they have invented systems. They have invented systems for solve, for finding the solution. And oftentimes it will take more than 20 moves, it might take 30, 40 moves, who knows. But essentially what you're doing when you pick up a jum jumbled up Rubik's cube is you're just kind of working the system of like, I turn it this way, I turn it this way, I based on this, I don't know how it works, I just know that it exists. <laughs> So it is not like the solution to the pro to the puzzle. It's just the the method, the process for getting to the solution, and then you just execute it. You just run the system. This is how Dark Souls combat works. That's how Dark Souls combat works. That's how I've, I figured it out. Uh, it is very very difficult to brute force a sufficiently jumbled up Dark Souls Rubik's cube because the game is not designed in a way where you can like do that many of the enemy like maybe like super fodder enemies yeah you can go run up and just hack them to death uh but anything more than that uh you, you have to exercise like a little bit of patience you have like okay most enemies in dark souls i would say are like a five let's just call it like a five move cube where you gotta like they have a little bit of the the the, the i don't know most there's like a whole big tier of enemies that you were consistently dealing with in Dark Souls. I'm talking about three, by the way. Probably varies between game, but I don't care. Where like their whole deal is they run up and then you block one attack that they do and then you hit them two or three times and they die. That's like a five move complexity enemy. And then you jump all the way up to the bosses who are like the totally jumbled up 20 move minimum type of a type of fight. So my problem is that I can go into any fight and once I wrap my head around around how the game works and what it expects of me, I can go into any boss room and I can hit my head against the wall a hundred times uh, and figure out how like how it works and what I need to do unless they have like a little gimmick or something. And then from there it's just it's just it's just running the system. That's probably part of running the system, but that's running the system, right? And eventually with just patience and and just repeated attempts, I can do it. And that's what frustrated, that's kind of like what frustrated me about that game was that I would beat bosses. I would look up and it's like, oh, the, the, this, this is considered a really hard boss. And I was pissed off because it felt like it was really easy once I beat it, like it wasn't satisfying because it felt like it was actually easy and I was just taking a really long time for reasons I couldn't understand. Maybe like lack of patience or whatever. Who knows? Uh, but that was like what my experience was. So when people talk about all of the, the depth of the combat system, as I understand it, it's a lot of like, oh, there's a bunch of different weapons and there's a bunch of different builds and equipment and this and that and different enemies that have all this. Uh, and my response to that is that like all of the creativity of the fight happens outside of the fight. It all happens in like the meta strategic it, uh, uh part of the game where you're deciding on your equipment and you're deciding on the weapons that you want to use and you're deciding on the build that you want to go for and the types of damage and how you want to upgrade your thing to add this kind of thing to it. Um, and that all happens outside of the fight, but within the fight, you're just running the system. You're just solving the cube, right? And for me, that kind of gameplay, uh, I am okay with running the system, but I can only do it for so long. I can only do it for so long before it gets uh, tiring. And I guess other people don't have a problem. They enjoy that. They enjoy those two parts of the game. The other problem for me was that I think, I, as I said before, I just didn't like any of the, any of the, ugh, any of the other weapons. I didn't like how any of the other weapons felt. So I just sort of felt like, yeah, I, I was not getting a lot of variety out of the game. Uh, it's just, that's just how the way that the game is designed. I'm fine with that. Uh, 
I, I just don't want to play that for 50 hours. So that is my more succinct metaphorical analogous explanation for my problem with the way that the Dark Souls are designed. Uh, I'm assuming, again, I only played three, but I'm assuming that that is probably the case with the other games as well. I can't imagine that they are designed in super drastic ways. Um, yeah, you know what's weird is like, I never, I feel like I don't hear people talk about what they like about those games very much. I just hear people talk about them, but I don't hear, I just like what's in them. They just don't talk about what they like about them. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention. Is that true? I'm sure that there are, right? I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> I must admit, I have not gone and watched like the fucking 10 hour deep dive analyses of the of Dark Souls 1. No, I have not put myself through that. But just in like casual conversation, like, like I understand like when Doom Eternal came out, I knew pretty quickly like why people specifically, even without having played the game, I knew why people liked it because they would like talk about the gameplay and stuff. But I never hear about that with Souls games. They just kind of talk about the stuff that's in them, right? Like they just talk about like this area or this thing. But I never hear someone talk about like, oh, I love the way that it feels like this or something. Or maybe it is just talk like, I don't know, like, like on a first run of the game, like, I guess I hear people talk about how, how much they like doing different builds and stuff like that. But that has to be, that's like after you've played the game multiple times. Like what is, what is supposed to be like the, the crazy hook that makes you love it like the first time around? I'm, 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 I'm honestly curious, right? Like I'm honestly, I, I, I'm not, I'd like to hear about what, like, tell me in the comments, the first time you played a Dark Souls game, what was it that you were like, oh, I love this shit. Like, is there a moment? Is there a, a specific feeling? Is there a, a mechanic? Like, what aspect of it did really excited you that kind of, like, just sort of failed to make it all the way over the hill with me? I don't know.